This is a little weekly series where I share a new product, dye, technique, paper collection, and we make something beautiful with it. Today, I want to introduce you to Spellbinders Susan's Victorian Garden. I shared a post last week that uh, featured her mason jar and lavender and her Victorian teacup. Today we're going to be working with her Southern Magnolia, which is these six dyes, and we're going to be using with her Southern foliage, working with her Southern foliage, and we're going to make this beautiful uh, magnolia. I'm, we're not going to make a card today. I'm going to show you how to shape this flower. This is an amazing flower, and I had such a fun time putting this together, and it's really not hard. I'm going to show you how to color the paper. I'm going to show you how to put the layers together, how to shape. Um, I also did a bunch of these leaves to kind of add in. I've got some extras for projects, and um, these are just simple. I just colored them with peeled paint and then spritzed them and then dry brushed them with chalk paint. So we aren't going to spend time on those, but we are going to make this flower together. And the paper collection that I used for my sample is Simple Story, Simple Vintage Weathered Garden. We've had a sudden turn in the weather here in North Carolina. It has been cold. We actually had a dusting of snow yesterday, which is, we, March is often a month when we get a little bit of snow. So I was like, well, I'm going to pull out this weathered garden uh, collection. It just felt right for the weather. This is a five by seven top fold card. I've used um, one of the clustered die cuts from the paper collection. This is an amazing paper grace eyelet die that I've created this background frame. The bulk of the time spent on this was on the flower. So that's what we're going to do together. But I know you like to see the inside. So here we go. A little sentiment panel, a little tea bag, a little tea sachet, a little honey stick and room to write another note. And that's the card. So let me clear my desk and we'll get started making this beautiful flower. As we get started, I just want to go over a couple of things. If you'll look on the Susan's Garden dies, she has etched in there the number of times you need to cut each piece. So for this large magnolia, you want two. For this large leaf, you want two to three. For this part, which I can't remember what this is called, but you need six of these two to three of the small leaves, one of the small magnolia, and then one of this stamen part. I, however, found that I wanted three of the large one, and maybe it's just the way I shaped mine, but I cut out three, and then just one of the small, and here are my leaves. Here's the stamen, and here's this part that has a weird name that I can't remember. To go with this, you're going to need some sort of a stylus, some sort of a stylus, and I'm using this one. When you're shaping the, this is from Heartfelt Creations and it has this nice interchangeable ball stylus. I've lost my largest size one, which is what is really ideal for this, but this one works just fine. And then you're gonna need a foam pad. Mine are really dirty, but I'm gonna show you a workaround on that. I chose a mixed media approach. You can certainly just spritz these with a little water, shape them and you're probably good to go. But I wanted mine to have this, uh, magnolias have a really waxy finish. They're an exquisite flower. So I treated mine with this Nouveau Mousse. And I find that they're not really completely white. A lot of times they have a little, just the tiniest hint of tan. So I colored mine with antique linen and I just kind of brushed it lightly over the top. And then I also sprayed it, no, then I treated it with this. For the leaves, I colored them with peeled paint distress ink on the one side, and then on the other side, I sprayed them with brown glimmer mist. And I think you can still get this from Canvas Core. They may have changed the name, but basically it just says it's brown. Um, the centers, I used squeezed lemonade distress ink and a little sponge dauber. Uh, I think that about covers it. Oh yeah, and then I spritzed the leaves after I brushed them with the um, distress ink. I spritzed them with this chalkboard, which is called clover, and it gives it a it gives it a really cool look. 
Anyway, all right, so let's put this aside and we'll go ahead, we'll get started now that you know what you need for tools. You also need some sort of glue, paintbrush. I have prills and then I also have distress glitter that I used on the stamens. I know this looks like a lot, but um, like I said, this is just the direction I chose to go. You don't have to do it like this. You can keep it super simple. And let me move these things. I'm gonna start with these large petals. And basically what I did is I just very lightly brushed my distressed linen, especially around the edges, just like that. So not like covering the whole thing, but just adding some shading to the edges of the leaves. And I did that on the big one and the small one, and I did both sides. Then for these leaves, well, actually I'll go back to this. And then in the center, I took my squeeze lemonade and I just added the yellow to the center. When you go over this with the Nouveau Mousse, everything will fade and blend. And it's, it's really, really beautiful. Um, let me see, the leaves, I took peeled paint. And I just kind of did like this. And then on the back side, this is uh, gathered twigs. Just to kind of lay down a basic. Then, move these out of the way. I came in with my sprays. And yes, this is messy, but it's really beautiful. So spray the back, see how beautiful? And then flip it and come in with the green. And spray the front. Just like that. And you can see there's little tiny bits of gold in there. So it gives it this really wonderful sort of dimension. And then this, you're just gonna use your sponge dauber and do yellow on both sides. Same with these, yellow on both sides. So what I'm gonna do, we're just gonna do, this is new, I haven't ever tried this before, but we're gonna do a little time-lapse photography and you can watch me put this whole thing together. I forgot to mention that I used, um, Spellbinders has a specialty flower paper and it just holds up better under these mixed media techniques. So you might wanna look into that. I'll link it um, in the supply list. So now I wanna shape these and I like to work on two mats because it presses down better, but mine are kind of dirty because I've had them for a long time. So I'm just gonna slip these under my scrapbook.com silicon mat and see now they won't get dirty. So the first thing I do is flip the flower face down and then I'm just gonna round and you wanna use the largest ball stylus you have for this. I'm just gonna go around the edges and pull in to the center to kind of cup it. And you wanna get this as smooth as you can because um, magnolia blossoms have a really smooth edge. I'm going to do the back on this side and you can see I'm just rolling this along and then flip this over and I'm going to go this way on this side because flowers, the layers go in different directions, see? And now I'm just coming in and I'm doing like this and if they get wrinkled, I don't know, my other one got wrinkled, it didn't really bother me, so just have fun with it. This is just a really beautiful free form kind of thing. It's all about what looks good to your eye. 
Um, I'm using a fair bit of pressure on this stylus as I go around. And then I'm going to come into the center and I'm going to press. And I might take this one and just, because this is going to be our, there. So, and this is, this uh, paper is slightly damp from the mousse. So there's the first one. And then I can just take my fingers like this and I like that layer. So I'm gonna set this aside. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you the other three. So my leaves are still slightly damp and now I'm just going to do the little finishing touch. I'm taking my tweezers and I'm just kind of rolling these edges just to kind of create a real organic look. You know, these leaves, they turn in sometimes, they turn out sometimes, they fold back. Um, so this is just so you can kind of see the little detail. And then I take the tip and I press it either this way and twist it, or let me shape this one. Or you can go in and press it down and twist it okay and that just gives it a more natural look and as i said before it's what looks good to your eye um, i've seen magnolias in all stages of development and sometimes they're just pure white and beautiful and very closed up almost like a, you know in bud and then at other times they're fully opened and they're starting to turn, they start turning a little bit brown on the edges, which was why I added that antique linen. So there you go, there's some little tips for finishing. Now we're gonna stack these together. And I like to use hot glue, you can use whatever you like, but I'm gonna put just a little bit of hot glue right in the center of this one. And then I'm gonna stagger the petals of the second one. And I've still got my mat. And I'm going to press this down in and I'm going to kind of move these petals to go the way I want them to go. There's this little one and you can see I'm just kind of pressing down and I'm folding the petals the way I want them to go. I want it to look sort of, I don't know, I don't want it to look perfect. <laughs> So if you use this kind of glue, this is my Art Institute Dries Clear, you just put it in the center and then stagger this in there. And I'm really pressing down because I want this to cup. Now I'm going to bring in this last piece and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of open it out. Put my glue in the center and I want to make sure I have petals in the places where it looks a little bit naked and then I'm going to press this in all right and you can actually even move these around because they're not quite dry and you can use your fingers to kind of shape them and move them get them where you want them to be And I actually even like manipulated these on the bottom a little bit so that I have more of a round shape while I'm pressing down and getting that glue to seal. I'm doing that. So see, there's the basic and it's really beautiful. And you can see how that Nouveau Mousse has added that waxy sort of sheen to it. Of course, your fingers look great too. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you very quickly how to shape the leaves. First I flip it over on its back 
and I just go straight down the center and that's going to cause that leaf, leaf to curl pretty well. And then come along the sides and again you can do one side and then you can flip it and do the other side and you can see how it's going to roll and curl. Honestly, the more raggedy these look, the more I like them. The leaves are some of the most beautiful parts on the tree. Now I've got a really tiny stylus point, and I'm going to just run this. My leaf is still a little damp, so it's a little hard to work with. Yours will be dry. And I'm just pressing down the center. Um, these are leaves. I don't I don't see a lot of seams in these, but there is a very distinctive seam right down the center. And then come in with your, I'm gonna just dry this a little bit because it's a little too wet to work with. One of the reasons I like to work with uh, damp paper when I'm doing my flowers is that the, the dampness releases the starch in the paper and then when that leaf or when that flower dries it really holds its shape but you can see I kind of beat this guy up a little bit anyway and then I come in uh, on the end the tip you do the same thing just kind of pinch it and twist it a little bit so I'm going to put my glue down and I'm going to glue this back behind and then I think this time I'm going to take one of my brown leaves and layer it in like that. See how pretty? And then you can just do the same thing on the other side. And I did spatter these with a little bit of my um, paint when I made them. All right. Okay. Okay. So there's that part. And we're just going to set this aside. Isn't it beautiful? This gets prettier and prettier. Mm -hmm. stamens and whatever this little dude is called on both sides and then you're just going to take your scissors and snip I'll show you you're just going to snip down try to stay in the middle don't go down too far just about three-fourths of the way down on each little bit and you'll see this looks really cool when it's done this part is really easy but this is a good, um, this is a good step to do. All right. Then I'm going to put mine, I put mine face down. I don't know. And then press in the middle. All right. Then take your glue. Put a little glue here. Take this one. And just, oops press in the middle and I'm pressing down pretty hard I'm just going to kind of bunch these guys up like this 
I'm going to take some of my glue, put a nice little puddle out. I got a little paintbrush. And I'm just painting glue. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in my Distress Glitter. I don't even know if they make this stuff anymore. Just use whatever. You can get pollen, uh, you know, like stuff that looks like pollen too. I just thought this looked really neat. And then just dip that in there and set that aside. This piece, you can do the same thing, only you don't go down as far. You just go about halfway. Oops, this last one is hard to get. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Then take your tweezers and you're gonna start at the end that doesn't have the tab. And you're just holding the very bottom and you're just gonna roll this. All right, kind of line it up. Take a little bit of your glue and roll it closed. And paint the ends with glue. And then these are, I'm amazed, prills. I'm just going to stick those in there like that. Pull this off my tweezer. Get my adhesive down in the center and pop this in the center and then I have this old um, baker's twine tube and I'm just going to set that in there until it dries okay the last step is putting this center into the flower and I put a fair bit of hot glue in there I'm going to take my center I'm just going to lay it in and press it in. And it doesn't have to look perfect. It's just so pretty with the white. So there you go, guys. That's how you make a Southern Magnolia. You'll have fun playing with this and shaping it your way, making it look like your flower, unique to you, what you want your project to look like. But these are beautiful. And they're so big, you really only need one on a project. And you've got it all done. So that's it for me today. Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design, Make and Take Tuesday with Susan's Victorian Garden. Y'all have a good one and go get your craft on. Bye.